We've talked about the Texas rig, we've talked about the drop shot. Now in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the shaky head and how you can actually catch bigger fish using this finesse bait. Make sure you guys leave some comments below on what bait or what technique you guys want me to talk about next. Drop the comments down below and I'll get at it for you guys. If you guys are new to the channel, be sure to smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and also hit the like button if you've been enjoying the content. If you guys would like, drop some video suggestions. Let me know what type of tip videos you guys wanna see. We're gonna have some killer fishing videos coming out soon, so just stay tuned for that. Be patient with me. You guys are gonna love it. Using a shaky head can be a great way to catch a lot of fish, especially when it's tough outside. It's been a while since I've really talked about the shaky head. It's been a while since I've really started throwing it but there are certain things that you can do to a shaky head to get those bigger bites and to also catch some more fish. So next time you guys go out on the water, I really suggest you guys take some of these tips, go apply them, and I hope you guys catch some more fish. Right. So let's talk about the rod and reel that we're using today. You guys know I really like a versatile combo. So I would say seven foot to seven foot three medium heavy. You can go with a heavy on a shaky head, but I probably wouldn't suggest it. If you guys were throwing like a big jig, I would suggest a heavy rod. Um, I like like a seven three medium heavy. It's got a little bit of backbone. If it's a little softer, like it doesn't have as much backbone, probably wouldn't suggest it. So, cause most of the time you're not gonna get that hook, you know, popped into that fish. But this is actually the rig that I got today. This is a half ounce shaky head. I'll suggest 3 16 ounce all the way up to half ounce if you guys are gonna be using that. Um, I'm using a half ounce because I'm gonna be trying to sling this thing out there during this winter time season, trying to get in those drop offs and where those fish are tucked away in those cubby holes. If you guys are wondering about the pound line that I'm throwing, I would highly suggest 15. Most people are gonna throw it on a spinning rod. You can use a lot lighter tackle, like 10 pound to 12 pound fluorocarbon. But for me right now, I'm using 15 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon on this reel. So this is a lot bigger than your average shaky head. You know, when you're shaky head fishing, you're thinking, oh, let's go super finesse and let's get those bites. Well, sometimes you don't have to do that. There's some little modifications that you can do to it so you can actually increase your bigger bites. And these are some of the things I learned over the past years and I'm gonna be showing you guys today. The way you rig up your shaky head is all gonna depend on how the fishing is that day. So you're always gonna have to experiment. Today, I'm using more of a bigger worm. You know, another day you might wanna use a smaller one if they're a little bit more finicky. Um, and if you're wanting to go for those big bites, I highly suggest using the bigger worm, but let me explain that. I'm not exactly talking about the length of it. I'm talking about just the bigger profile worm. So the fatter worm that you're gonna put on a shaky head. Um, one bait that you can put on a shaky head that will usually only catch big fish. I haven't ever talked about this on my channel. If you guys want a solid video on it, I'll have to do it. But if you guys put a stick bait, like a Senko or a Clout by Six Cents, on a shaky head, it's a huge profile. Now let me tell you, you will get a lot bigger bites on it. You guys are probably asking why. Guys, it's more dense. It's just a bigger profile. It's not that it's longer and just overall a giant worm, but it's fatter and it just looks a lot bigger to that fish. So today, the worm that I'm using is a Divine Shaky Head Worm by Six Cents. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, and I have not experimented with this thing enough, but the fish that I have caught on it have been big, but I think I know why. Usually when you buy a finesse worm, it's a lot smaller. As you guys can tell by this one, just the profile of it is a lot heftier, it's a lot bigger, as you guys can tell. It's just a big worm in general. The width of it's a lot thicker than your standard average trick worm or finesse worm and that's really why I think has the big bite. So as you guys can tell, you know, at the front of the worm right here, it's pretty wide and it tapers down to this point on the end. This is actually a six inch shaky head worm right here. If you guys are wondering about the colors and what colors I would pick depending on what place that you're going to go, this is actually green pumpkin blue. If you guys are fishing, you know, somewhat clear water, I suggest any green pumpkin color. So like whether it's green pumpkin blue, green pumpkin green, watermelon candy, watermelon seed, those are gonna be all great colors for, you know, the water that's not super stained. But if you guys are fishing, you know, water that's pretty dirty, the visibility is very low, muddy water, you know, it might look like straight chocolate milk, you know, that just nasty, dirty stuff. I would suggest using like a black and blue, 
a June bug, some of the darker colors like that. And that would be your best bet for dirty water. So now that we talked about the colors of the baits that we're gonna be using depending on the water clarity, we talked about the combo that I suggest putting it on, whether it's a spinning rod or if it's a bait caster. For me, I'm very picky. I, I just like throwing a bait caster. Um, and this is a heavier shaky head so I can get it out there. And also we talked about what types of worms to put on there, whether they're big or small, you're gonna have to adjust that throughout the day, depending on how the fish are acting. So now let's go ahead and talk about how do we work the shaky head and what are a couple ways to work it depending on the conditions to get more bites and more importantly catch those bigger fish all right so if you guys are wondering you're probably asking noah what type of shaky head is this and why did you pick that one this one is actually called a screw lock there's a little tiny screw right on here and you're going to screw your finesse bait your worm your trick worm whatever it is your divine shaky head worm on to the shaky head you're just going to screw it on and then this is what you're going to do so once you screw this bait on you're going to have it like this and you're going to want to bury that hook in the bait and you're going to want to kind of bury the end point of that so you can get through all that cover or whatever you're fishing and then it's going to look beautifully just like that and when this thing is on the ground what it's going to exactly do this head is going to be on the bottom and this tail with the soft plastic that this is made out of is going to allow this bait to shift up. So in the water, this is exactly what it's going to look like. And then you're going to be hopping it around, around the bottom and this tail is going to be kicking just like that. So you're hopping it around and that's going to entice the fish to bite. Even this little movement right here is going to add a little bit of vibration, especially when you're fishing some of that dirty water and you're using those dark colors. So if you guys have not seen the drop shot video or the Bass Pro Shops fishing kit video, I highly suggest you go watch them. I'll link them down below low I actually came out to the same area I kind of broke down what we were fishing and I'm going to briefly talk about it today in a different manner um, so it can help you guys catch some more fish on a shaky head so this time of year you guys are going to want to find those drop-offs and those little holes that those fish are going to get down in today we're at this beautiful pond it's actually a fairly large area it's kind of hard to fish from the bank because sometimes you know some of the deeper spots majority of the time or out there um, a lot of people have been asking me how do i find the deep holes start counting down my bait so right here you got this huge flat okay it goes out about 100 foot and then right when you get out to 100 foot off the bank it's going to slightly drop off and it's going to be so it's about five foot up here on this flat then it's going to drop off to about eight to 12 foot that five foot to eight to 12 foot is a big difference guys this time of year there's going to be a lot of fish stacked down there that's something you're going to want to pay attention to but something i found over the last couple of times i've been here is up on this flat there's some hard bottom whether it's rock or whatever it is but there's a lot of hard bottom on this flat and it is great for a shaky head and finesse bait to really trigger in on that and work it very slow in those spots because those fish can stack on it very well. So let's go ahead and make a cast out here and I start talking about how we're working it and hopefully we'll catch a fish while we're at it. Because we're wondering right where I just casted, there is actually a hard bottom and it's about five by five. It's a very small area, but I like those isolated areas like that. The reason I do is because the bigger fish seem to pull up on those. Um, that's just from my experience. I think the bigger fish pull up on more of the isolated areas. You can fish this whole drop off and there can be a ton of fish stacked up. But if you find those small isolated areas like the little hard bottoms, the little boulders that are on the bottom, the little rocks, sometimes you can find the big fish stacked on that. So let's go ahead and fish for a minute and then we'll start talking about the different ways to work the shaky head depending on how the fish are acting at that time of day. Oh my gosh, it's a giant. That's what I was saying. It took me a minute to get a bite, but it's a giant because that huge worm. Oh my gosh. Is this like a four pounder? Oh, he ain't that big as a three pounder though. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this time of year, guys, right there, big winter bass. Look at that freaking football <sighs> on the divine. Shaky head worn by six cents, I didn't say, but if you guys would like to go check it out and get 10% off, I can pop that up on the screen. I highly suggest you go try in this. And if you guys wanna catch bigger ones, I suggest trying this worm. And what I was gonna say is like, I haven't caught many fish on this, but the ones I have, I haven't caught a fish smaller than this on this worm, which is just honestly crazy. That is almost a three and a half pound bass right there. 
um, super dense, super fat on the big shaky head worm. I'm telling you guys, you know, just adjusting what you're putting on these shaky heads can trigger those bigger ones to bite. And with this bait being a bigger profile, it'll catch bigger bass. And that is a solid three pounder, first fish to start off today. Haven't been out here in well over a week. And that is just, oh my gosh, such a beautiful fish. Healthy, fat as ever during this winter time. And that's exactly what you're wanting to catch, especially if you're wanting to get just a little bit more bites and catch those bigger ones. Guys, pay attention to how fat this fish is. That is a very great, healthy fish. Golly, that is over three pounds all day and he's just a football. There you go, buddy. And like I say in a lot of the videos, pay attention to how this fish are swimming off. Um, on a day where they're a little more active, you'll see that they'll dart off really quick. And usually when the pressure's high or if the fish are a little bit slower, you can almost tell by the movement of their body. And this is something that no one talks about, but you know, just really pay attention to that because it can really make you judge on what you need to be throwing and how you need to be fishing just off of how you're watching the fish swim away um, after you catch it. That is just an extremely important tip that you guys need to put in your arsenal. So we just talked about the six cents divine shaky head worm on how it's a bigger profile and that you know you can throw those shaky head worms that are a little more dense, a little more fatter, it doesn't have to be longer, but just a bigger bait and it will help catch those fish. It did take me a little bit longer to get a bite, but when I did, it was not a one pounder. It was a three pounder and that's the importance of switching up to a bait like this because it will help you catch those bigger fish even in the tough times because this is a bait that you can work very slow and usually most of the time a big fish doesn't just want a snack bro he wants a meal you know big boy wants a meal you know he don't want no fun size kit kat bar he wants king size boys and that's why you need to pick out stuff like that and if you fish them you know fish them around there's some of those big fish areas this time of year and you're going to catch them well guys, that is awesome right there. That is exactly what I wanted is to show you guys this. I, I cannot believe it. I've only caught five or six fish on this and I think that is probably one of my smallest ones. It is just amazing how, you know, a bait that people say catches small fish, like a drop shot, a shaky head. People are like, oh, they only catch small fish. Guys, if you change up the presentation and you put the right bait on there, for some reason, this worm in particular, like I used to only use like regular zoom finesse worms. But when I started switching over to this one and just like the fatter profile of it, and I just swear it produces bigger bites. It's, it's so crazy, man. I thought it was crazy at first because I was like, man, I caught one big fish on it. I was like, oh, you know what? I just probably stumbled across them. Caught two big fish on it. I was like, okay, you know, I probably just stumbled across them. Caught three big fish on it. Then it started to have me think. And I was like, you know what? Like, is it this worm? Is it just the profile? Like, it's just kind of bigger. Maybe it's the grooves in it. Maybe it's the way the body shaped and it has this fluttering. I do not know. And I'm not saying that you're not going to catch small fish on it, but that is actually one of the smallest. I think I've caught one two pounder on it, but that is probably the second smallest out of like six, seven fish that I've caught on this worm. That's just weird to think about. I'm sure we'll get a smaller one today, but that, I don't know. I thought it was just a fluke at first. I was like, I'm just must be getting lucky and I'm in front of the bigger ones, but I'm, I'm just a firm believer in like there's dense worms like that and that that the bigger ones just want that like putting this on there or putting like a clout or like a stick bait on there it's just a massive profile that those big fish like oh my god i got another one next cast are you kidding me oh my gosh that was another big one he came off holy freaking smokes guys that was next cast literally next cast i didn't even move it for a couple minutes that was another good one. I leaned into him. I felt him for a second and he came off. He must have not had the worm. I should have let him eat it a little bit longer. You know, with me predicting or me watching that fish swim off a little slower, I should have let that fish eat it a little bit longer, knowing that they may be a little more lethargic today. Gosh dang it. But that's okay. You know, there's more stacked up out on this flat, on this hard bottom. We should catch another one, especially with the clouds up today. I, that's one thing I didn't talk about. You know, it's cloudy. And when the fish, you know, is cloudy outside, usually they start roaming a little bit more. So they're going to be pushing up on this flat, not even on those hard bottoms. I got another one. Are you kidding? Me? Oh my God. It's another big one. This worm, I'm a, I'm a firm believer. I'm a firm believer. Three casts in a row, three big bites. Unfreaking believable. I can't tell how big he is. Oh, he's not even big. Oh, he felt so large. He felt so large. He ain't a bad one though, that's a two pounder. Holy cow. Look at him eat that thing. <laughs> that's a football. This is crazy. I, I'm a firm believer in this worm. What, why in the heck? 
it has to be the big profile if you guys do decide to go try this out if you go get one i i do want you guys to send me some pictures if you guys are catching some just mat like just larger fish than normal on a shaky head and that is a quality one you know he's not bad he's not giant but you know what it's a solid pound and a half fish thought he was two pounds but he and he is not that but that is just a healthy one right there three casts in a row the bite before that one <sighs> that fish felt really big i stuck him for a second but let's get back out there that was three casts in a row three bites on the divine shaky head worm all right guys so now let's talk about a few different ways that you can work this shaky head so let's go ahead and beam a long cast out there all the way out on the drop off okay we're gonna let our bait hit the bottom that's very important these are baits that you're gonna want to keep bottom contact the whole time you're not wanting to swim this bait you know you're not wanting to hop in mid water column you're not wanting to reel it at the top like a top water you got to keep this on the bottom at all times so my bait just hit the bottom and there's going to be the basic you know what i like to call just the shaky it you know just basic and you're just going to reel up and you're just going to kind of hop it just like this just barely hop that thing along the bottom just imagine your bait sitting on the bottom just kind of hopping it that's going to be the basic way if the fish are a little bit more active if they're wanting to eat it that way if you're wanting to cover a lot more water it's just kind of hopping this thing along the bottom and you guys can notice i'm working it pretty fast but you guys got to understand this bait has to be on the bottom at all times so the second technique let me get a long cast beam it out there let that sucker hit the bottom right on the drop off and this is actually one i don't do much with the shaky head but this is just going to be simply dragging it okay so we're gonna let it hit the bottom and then just kind of lift up on your rod here let me let me hold it in front so you guys can see it perfectly lift up on your rod and just slightly bring your tip from out here and then just slightly drag upwards and you're just dragging this thing along the bottom i like to do this more with like a texas rig or a texas rig crawl knowing that those tails flutter but this can still be a great way to catch them depending on the day depending on the conditions and depending more importantly on how the fish want it and this is the last way and this is probably one of the most important ways especially for everybody watching that everybody needs to know it's called dead sticking so you're going to throw your bait out there you're going to let it hit the bottom and you're just not going to move it okay you're just going to let that thing soak down there for however long it is you may be 15 20 seconds make sure you keep on reeling up your slack a little bit and kind of feeling to make sure you don't have a fish on because the last thing you want to do is let a fish eat it all the way down and just goal it so just keep kind of checking but keep that bait kind of in the same area and just let it sit there every once in a while give it a couple little hops but still keep the bait around in the same territory in the same spot and just keep that bait bottom contact and just kind of letting it sit there every once in a while lift up give it a couple pops okay let it sit there so those are three to four different tactics on how to work the shaky head right there and so you guys are probably saying noah when do i know when to do which one this is how i would do it the first one i talked about the shaky all right, you're just shaking it. That's on more of an active day, okay? This fish are a little bit more active. You're wanting to cover some water and you're just going around trying to get those fish that are a little more aggressive to bite a slow moving bait. The drag, that can be when the fish are a little bit slower. You know, you're not getting the bite when you're hopping it like that. So you really want to start dragging that bait really slow. And then the last one, which is the dead stick, that one can be important. That, that is the most important one out of any of these. You know, a lot of people are saying they can't get bites. You know, the weather's really cold. You need to try the dead stick. And you're just gonna leave your bait out there. And it's gonna help you get so many more bites.